Guys, it's been a rough week, so instead of the academic deep dive I was going to do, I think maybe it's time for a cup of tea. Or as we say in Welsh, Amsar Panat. The essential kit list starts, of course, with a teapot. The best cups of tea are made in a teapot. I do not make the rules, I merely enjoy playing by them. You must also then have a cup or mug for your tea to go into. This should be made of ceramics. Travel mugs are acceptable if you are really, really, really rushed. Next you need tea. We're using black tea, the best tea. You can use tea bags as long as they are unbleached and plastic free because we do not use plasticky tea bags because we are not planet killing scumbags on this channel. We are cool dudes. I am going to be using a loose leaf tea today. It doesn't have to be Hebden Tea's chocolate and mint flavoured tea, but it is very nice. It also happened to be the first loose leaf tea that my hand came across when I reached into my tea cupboard. Use Welsh water if you can. I live in England so my taps look like this because English water is crap. I know they drink a lot of tea but Irish, Scots and Welsh viewers will all back me up on this. Our water is better for tea. If you can get hold of Welsh water, your experience will be massively improved. You do not have to use Brecon Carrig water, I just happen to have this bottle lying around. It is nice water though, and it is at least better than flooding villages to get hold of some soft water to make your tea. Looking at you, Liverpool. Please boil your tea in a kettle. A kettle is an absolutely essential piece of kit for making a cup of tea nothing else will do. Preferably without any plastic involved, I can't manage that. Some sources will say that you can simply microwave the water, or indeed the tea, in a microwave. This is a crime and should be avoided. If you see anybody doing this, report them to the authorities immediately. If you find yourself trying this, be warned the spirit of Marie Lloyd will haunt your cup of tea and ruin your entire tea drinking experience. Again, boil your tea water in a kettle, it is the safest option for you. Many people ignore this next step, but I like to rinse my kettle with hot or boiling water because it then prepares the kettle for the tea that you're going to put into it and means that the tea is less bitter. This is also an essential part of Gong Fu Cha, the Chinese art of making tea. We are not going to be using a lot of the rest of the Gong Fu Cha principles and equipment because we are not making a beautiful Chinese cup of tea, we are making a nice cup of tea. That is, a panad da in the Welsh tradition. I also have a nice Chinese tea making kit which I'm not using because that would be disrespectful to the equipment and would result in a lovely cup of Chinese tea, not a panad da, which is what I need right now. Next we place the tea into the teapot. Strength is to your taste, but generally I go by my granny's old adage which was one teaspoon each and one for the pot. It looks like I'm putting flipping loads in here, but I promise I am actually putting two heaped teaspoons of tea into this teeny tiny teapot. You do not have to use a teeny tiny teapot, but this one makes two decent sized cups of tea, and that's probably about what I'm going to horse down my neck. Next, we put the hot, boiling hot water into the teapot. If your water is not boiling hot, I'm sorry, but your tea will be crap. None of this hot, not boiling nonsense here, thank you. Technically, you do not have to stir your tea. It will not make it crap if you don't, but this releases more of the delicious teeiness and is part of the ritual of keeping Marie Lloyd at bay until a time of year where we want to be seeing her. We then put the lid on the teapot to keep it warm. If you have a cosy, deploy it now. Always ignore the steeping instructions on mainstream tea companies. They want you to buy more tea so they make it lower. Five minutes is how long a panada needs to brew for at minimum. If you want your spoon sticking up in it, even longer. This also applies to the use of tea bags. Leave your tea going for five minutes minimum. Any less, and I will come for you. Next up, straining. And if you're thinking, Jimmy, that tea strainer looks absolutely disgusting, you're right. At least one item of the tea making equipment must be disgustingly covered in tannins to make a proper panad. We remove the strainer to reveal a perfectly steeped cup of tea. I forgot about this one for seven and a half minutes. Came back to this wonderful dark amber or light mahogany colour with a couple of little bubbly bubbles. It is absolutely spot on and could only be improved if the logo on the cup and the saucer lie, there it is, now it's a perfectly steeped cup of tea. If you don't take milk in your tea, leave this. 
This is fine. It won't be too bitter. It will be delicious. But I take milk because I'm classy. So here it goes. One splash of milk. No more. Any more than that. And we wouldn't get this wonderful whirly whirly thing happening with the patterns in the mug or the cup. Now, you don't have to stir it with a teaspoon, you can just enjoy the whirly-whirly nonsense. But I use a teaspoon because I am, as I say, classy. Technically, I'm stirring it slightly more than I need to here, but we really want to get everything nice and combined. Then, we do the classic tap of the teaspoon, ding, on the rim. Don't rush this or you'll splash tea everywhere. A crime. You may be tempted to commit another crime if you're using a tea bag, which is to simply squeeze the tea bag when it's not been in there for long enough. This is a heinous crime. If you see anybody putting the tea bag in the cup and then instead of waiting for it to steep properly, squeezing it with either the spoon or their fists, report this person immediately. You do not want to associate with this sort of person. They will make your tea and your life crap. Mary will almost certainly come for them. Right, that's quite enough of that. Let's get on with drinking this panad, shall we? I know this was a bit silly and a lot different to most of my other videos, but I hope that you enjoyed it. You now have all of the instructions that you need to make a perfect panad. It doesn't take very long, five or six minutes, and you have all of the kit, equipment, and ingredients that you need right here in this video. Dilch and Mauriaun and your friends. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. A lot of things went wrong, a lot of things didn't go as planned this week, so I thought it was time for a little silly video, because I haven't done one of those for a while. But may your panads be perfect, may your milk never curdle, and may you have the perfect bickies to go with your cup of tea. What are your favourite bickies? Personally, I am a big fan of the classic chocolate digestive, maybe a hobnob, but they do get between my teeth, and a little guilty pleasure of mine has always been the pink wafer biscuit. But... Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to support the channel financially, we have all the links in the description, as usual. Otherwise, if you just want to like and subscribe, that'd be great. Tanatronissa. Till the next time, who will vow? Bye-bye.